eight years ago, in my technology management class, 15 MBA students and me, we discussed what is the way, the best way to measure and also promote the creative. Finally, we came up with an idea. We want to launch a creative idea contest. We call that is the Arctic Innovation Competition. The Arctic Innovation Competition was designed with the highest level of openness. There is no entrance fee, no any limitation for the contestants, then also no topic limitation. So any good idea, new idea, you can submit to the competition. That is our original idea. Then also this idea works. So that means that we do not have anything, but we got an idea. So we put this idea into practice. So we, we launched the competition in 2009. So we got the everything from the scratch. Over years, we got over 30 organizations sponsored events. We have over 1,000 people submit their idea to the competition. So that is the one example to show you. So the uh, one simple idea, very, very simple idea, can be work if you put them into practice. But after the competition, so after running this competition for seven years, we, got, we learned something. So we understand if you want to promote mass innovation, you need to spark innovation into the alien minds. Why alien minds? What is the alien minds? Alien minds is not means foreigner. It's not a refer to the creature from the outer space. <laughs> because we do not know where to find them, right? <laughs> but you see the alien minds, we refer to the people. They have a very little experience in innovation. So they do not have a very much experience in innovation. It's because they are mental distance from the innovation. So we call these people is an alien man. So why we need to spark innovation in the alien man? Because everyone can think. Everyone has the capability to create something new. So that is the alien man is a big golden wine. So the Arctic Innovation Competition, it's one example to show you so how to spark innovation among the public. Then another one is the innovation. There is no monopoly, no monopoly. No matter how rich you are, no matter how many smart people you have, you cannot monopolize innovation. No matter you buy use law, or you buy the uni, you, any methods or any regulation, you just cannot monopolize the innovation. So that is the innovation. It's everyone's business. It's not just someone's business. So if we spark innovation among the, in the alien minds, we can get a lot, a lot positive results. Our Arctic innovation competition is a very good example. We have a contest come from the worldwide, everywhere. So that is the oldest one, is the over 90 years old. Youngest one is 80 years old. But why people have the alien minds? Why they think innovation is a distance from them? It's mainly they have a couple misunderstanding. The first misunderstanding is innovation. It's very expensive, very expensive. That's true. Some innovation is expensive. You need to spend a lot of money on the project, especially is on the downstream in developer the products. But by the definition, by the origination, by the philosophy of the innovation, innovation means get something from nothing or next to nothing. So that is the innovation. 
So that the miracle, why we have this miracle? So we can explain this from the input and the output. The output of the innovation is novelty. You got some new design, you got a new product, new service, new feature, new function. Generally speaking, it's a novelty. But very basically, it's a new combination. Then the input for the innovation is existence. We were born into the existence. We grew up in the existence. We do not need to buy existence. So what is the miracle happen is we use the thinking power to replace the ingredients. So that is the reason the innovation is get something from nothing. If you are the innovation is too expensive, I encourage you to think more, to innovate your more so you can save money. So another one, another misunderstanding about the innovation is innovation is related to the smart people. It's related to the, the genius. It's not to me. But in fact, you see how innovation happened, conduct. You see the innovation is a mix of three parts. The first one is knowledge. The second one is experience. The third one is your interpretation to the stimulants. So that means these three parts put together to create the new idea. So this is the mixing. It's holistically. So when you mix them, you are the experience, you are the knowledge, so you are the interpretation. They are working simultaneously. So that means everybody, they have their own knowledge, their own experience, their own interpretations. Maybe older people, you have more knowledge and experience. Younger people, but you have a strong interpretations. So that is the innovation mix very independently. So that means this is the very, very personal things. So that means innovation relate to everyone, relate to you, relate to me, relate to everybody. So the third one, the misunderstanding about the innovation is we do not know innovation how it's come. We do not have a clue how to got the start of the innovation. So traditionally, we have a one click mechanism. So we always thinking the innovation was brought about by one factor. So I call this the one click mechanism. If we use the one click mechanism, what results we got? We got the most of the innovation. It's come from a pure chance. So that means we do not know where they come from. It's a chance. But in fact, if we use a double click, so that means we're thinking innovation was triggered by at least two factors. So we can have a better understanding. So in this case, we can find several patterns for the innovation. The first the pattern is passion plus frustration. So you have a passion. You want to do something. You want to pursue your other pattern, uh, your other passion, but you have some uh, barriers. So that means to make you cannot pursue your passion. So in this time, it's very easy to create a new idea. So that means we call it what is creation. So for example, one guy loved the, mu the movie very much. He wanted to see a new movie. But during the show time, he cannot find the parking spot for the movie. So he is so angry, he went back to develop a software. This software just for find a parking spot. So you see that is the one case, right? Another one is that you are set up, you are the man on something, you're doing your certain work, but at the same time, you got some inspection or tips from the other source. So in this case, you got some idea. You, you ask yourself, why not? Is right? Why not? I can do this. So that is the another pattern of the innovation. So for example, the one doctor, she wanted to extract some material from the plant, from one plant, but she cannot got it. But when, he, when she read the, the old, very old medicine book, they say, oh, you can got some material by using very low temperature. 
So she got the inspiration. So try to use the very low temperature method to extract this material. Finally, she succeeds. Last year, she won the Nobel Prize. So the third one is that you switch state from the thinking stage into another or the impressive or improvisal situation. So in this one, you are easily to generate, oh, it may, it may work, creations. So for example, two Seattle daddies, after they play golfing, come home in one Saturday, they realize, they realize, they are the family have nothing to do. So they improvise to create a new game. Create a new game. Use what they are on hands. So for example, they have a rocket, the ping pong rocket. They have the net, the tennis net. They, the, their family have an old court for the badminton. They create a game. Now this game have a 2.5 million people play this game. This game is called a pickleball. So this is the three, the three, the misunderstanding. If you're thinking the innovation, you understand what is that is the misconception. You will thinking the innovation is pretty easy. So I mentioned that is the innovation. It starts from the existence. You do not need to buy existence. You just find a way to treat existence as you are the leverage. So here, we will show you a couple ways to develop innovation. The one way we call that is the inside box innovation. So what is the box? A box, generally speaking, is a legacy. It's a thinking legacy. So that means that if you start from there, you can deal with. The first way we see the inside box innovation or creation. The inside box creation is you follow a solution other people have been used. This is an example. This is the team. It's come from the Southeast, Asia, uh, Southeast Alaska. It's the Sound Base High School. The school kids, they develop they are the tide pump. So they got the idea is from a hundred years old idea, how to use the tide power. But what they are new, they build up they are the pump on a floating dock. So that means they can put they are the pump anywhere, right? Another way they put they are the pump above the water. So there is no erosion problem. So they just make a little bit of change. They spend a hundred dollars make this demo system. So later, they have been pumping the water freely into a higher space, into a reservoir. Then from there, they can generate the, the hydro powers. So this is the way. You just copy other people's idea, but modified outputs. Then another one is called the next box creation. Next box creation is means you start with a problem. So everybody have a problem, is right? So that means you use your problem as a leverage to find a solution. So this is the, called the Wiley Post. Wiley came from Alaska. He used to be a goalie, then also a coach for an ice hockey team. Being a player, then also being the coach. He found a problem, a very annoying problem. So that means when you push the, the, the net pole, so as a goalie, you push that, they will move. They will move. So that means they will cause the unfair, then also stop the play. So that is the very annoying. So he developed a very simple solution. So you see, this is the traditional pack, right? He just developed another new pack to add one more spark. So solve the problem, but solve this problem, create another problem. Because you know in the hockey, when you do the net, put it there. So if the goalie push that, they should stay. But if the other player smash into this one, they should kick off. So that is the safe, is right? So in this way, Wiley working on another idea, so he redesigned this one. Not only you say cut the the, the, the metal parts, then also add the plastic parts. 
So that is the make that is a lot safer. So if you slam on it, so that they will break off. If the goalie push the, 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 the post, they will stay. So you see, after the 15 prototype, he solved one problem, fire problem. One problem every time. So after the 15 version, now this product is being used in the, the ice hockey field. Then also, he filled the application they manufactured. So this is the, another example. So the third way, we say, treat the box above the box. Use your the passion. Use your passion. If you have a passion, you can develop a nice idea. So this is the, the, the Mackey. Mackey have the passion. That is to have a nice tool, right? But the one time, when he applying choking, he cut his finger. Then he developed something from his tool. If he is not a person have a passion, he will stop there because they have the tool already. But he have the passion to make a nice one. So he, after the first prototype, he working another 30 that make the finally the product we call the easy tap. So that is the very beautiful, very easy. So you have a seven functions to use these tapo tools. Then also you see that is the two daddy. If they play, they like the, uh, the, the sports so much. So when they come home, they say they are the family, do not play the sports. They feel that is very difficult. So that means they develop a new game. So that is the reason. So you can use passion above the box to create something new. So you can surround the problem. So deal with the problem. Then also you can follow other people's thinking to create new ideas. OK, if everyone, you are interested in the innovation, you want to encourage your the family, your friends to create something, please thinking about this simple procedure. The first one is identify a trade-off. So what is a trade-off? A trade-off is one thing replace another one. So that means, simply means, you cannot have both of them. So that is the start point. But you need to ask why, right? Because they give you an offer, a very good start point to create something new. Then the second one is being more picky. If you are more picky, you will find the problem. You can tolerate what is the current solution. So you will think in other way. Then the third one is find a solution. Find a solution is a very simple way. Just to borrow tools from your neighbor. <laughs> right? So that means that if you are thinking other field, you associate your problem with the other area, so you can create something. So for example, the pickball, they borrow the the paddle from ping pong. They use the net from tennis. They use the card from the badminton. Is right? Borrow something. Borrow the tools. Borrow the methods from your neighbors. Then the third one is that after you start from small, so you can gradually improve it. You gradually improve. Finally, make your the product more useful, more effective, more beautiful. Right? So everyone have the creative currency. But this currency is inflatable. If you do not use, they, they will lose the value. So please, use it. Then also, if everybody use this one, so that means we, this one is came the reality, thinking, create, change the world. Then also, everyone, you can create. But I hope everyone, after you got your success story, please share your exciting story with your neighbors so we can steep more innovation. Thank you.